This is episode 72 of the Gold Squadron Podcast. I'm your host, Dion Morales, and today I'm joined by Can We Get to Worlds? William Hagwood. Dion, the possibility of successfully navigating to Worlds is approximately 3,720 to 1. <laughs> I'm here with my protocol droid, <laughs> William Hagwood. How's it going, man? Oh, it's going great. All right, so it's you, me, and the world today. It's just it's just you and me putting the whole team on our back. Uh, that's okay. We're going to do it. We got this. That's right. So um, today we're going to be talking about organized play for second edition. But before we get into that, we, of course, we have our intro things. Upcoming live streams. This weekend, the 18th of August, we're going to be streaming from Fair Games, their store championship there. The following weekend, we have, uh, I think, another one at Games Plus. And then the Sunday after that, that is Sunday. I'm going to pull it up on my phone to make sure. Actually, I forgot to put this one in the notes. Sunday, I guess it's, yeah, the weekend after next. Uh, Sunday, August 26th, we're going to be streaming uh, and recording a podcast from my backyard with a first edition bonfire. So that should be a lot of fun. Uh, cardboard and paper things are, are, are going to be used as the, uh, as the fodder for the fire should, be, should, should be a good time and, uh, just a, a good opportunity to get the squad together. And like me personally, um, I don't have space to store the first edition stuff. So that's why, um, you know, rather than just tossing it in the recycle bin, do something, uh, do something a little fun with it. And. We've been talking about it a lot, and this week you're gonna start starting this week. You're gonna start seeing it plastered everywhere. The Gold Squadron Classic. It's coming, guys. It's September 22nd. Go to GoldSquadronPodcast.com to uh, to sign up. Okay, sign up. Do it. Do it now. Don't be left waiting. We have 120 spots. The goal is like my goal is to fill every single one of them. Will it happen? I don't know, but. I sure as hell going to try. Um, again, September 22nd, a couple of new pieces of information we got. The uh, So we're holding this event in what's called a Moose Lodge. And it's where the Boy Scouts meet, and it's like a community center. And they have, or they're going to have open for us a cash bar. So if you like to drink and you like to play X-Wing, you'll be able to take those two things and mix them together at our event. And uh, that should be awesome. There's going to be... <laughs> There's going to be food as well. And as part of the fundraiser, the Boy Scouts will be there. They're going to be our servers for the day. So you'll be able to order food while you're playing. And they will actually bring it to you. So that's going to be super awesome. And there's one more thing. Everybody who pre-registers for the event. So if you go to the website, you sign up. You are going to get an exclusive second edition alternate art card that only pre-registers will get. Anybody who shows up just that day will not be getting this card. So if you want it, that's uh, that's for you. I was going to show some spoilers for the uh, – there's going to be some top eight templates for uh, – for the Gold Squadron Classic, but I didn't quite have it ready. So maybe we'll show that next week, and uh, we'll start spoiling things here and there. It should be pretty awesome. Uh, super excited about that. Are you going to be able to make it to the Classic, William? Oh, well, he said cash bar, so I'm opening up my schedule. <laughs> yep. So but No, no, I, I should be able to make it. Uh, it's, uh, it should be a great event. Uh, for a good cause, and X Wing 2.0, and alcohol. <laughs> ah, you're hitting, you're hitting all the good things right that, there. That's right. And actually, there's a couple of uh, one question that some people have asked is, what's going to be the like building format? We're gonna we're calling it open construction. So you can use anything that's in Wave One and the conversion kits. Anything at all. Build your list as long as it's one faction and it's equal to 200 points. You're done. That's it. I'm going to be sending out an email here with some additional instructions on how to confirm that it's 200 points. Uh, we're going to be using a certain squad builder because I, I don't know what's going to be available. Like we need printouts of things and it's going to be easier to print it out than handwrite it. And you could submit it electronically to save yourself time and save me time because we're streaming all, you know, all that stuff. Anyway, 
Uh, but yeah, if, well, if we'd we'd hope by then, because it's going to be the you said the not the week of, but the week after the launch. Yep. So, so fingers crossed for the app uh, already on, <laughs> already on and on full display. Yeah. Um, as for like the grand prize, that's T B A right now. Uh, the one prize, the two, the two pieces of swag that we are talking about right now is the that. Uh, pre-registration participation card uh, oh it's not participation card there's the pre-registration card which is different than the part than the participation and we have top eight templates we'll start adding on to our our final there no somebody in the chat here asks cash prize question mark no no cash prize because it's, it's a charity event no cash prize <laughs> didn't you already spoil a wearable prize i did you know what you're right i did say that there is a wearable prize for the champion that's all we'll say <laughs> all righty so let's go ahead and get into our topic today we have one topic of conversation today and that is talking about organized play and second second edition today monday they ffg was like here's some content for your podcast Dion." and i was like hey thank you so much um there's a lot in the article that they released and what i want to do i want to take some time to take it apart also, to simplify some of the language that they've given us in uh, in some of these articles and translate some things, because you know they're using all these names. What does that mean for us in the in the real world? So, what's going to be what's our first uh, first event type that we have in our notes there, Will? Uh, attack run kits. Uh, these are uh, seasonal kits similar to the quarterly kits that we've grown accustomed to. Yeah, so that's, you know, just, just what, what you know already. It's uh, like the store championship level no longer exists in their current structure. It is these attack run kits and the next one, which I'll go ahead and take, and that's your deluxe wave kits. That's going to be the things that happen at your store level. The deluxe wave kits sound interesting. Um, we know that they're going to be quick, quick build uh, card events where they'll ship um, in the kit. They'll have pre-built, uh, quick build cards that aren't in your kits already. Um, something specific for that event, and then there's they they added this stipulation uh not stipulation but this new part well i'll have you read that in a second where you can actually like score extra points and become like the wave champion go ahead and uh read that for me will uh as the deluxe kits um they're gonna tie together all of the events that take place in your favorite local game store between wave releases your performance at each event will earn you points in an ongoing contest to become the overall wave leader. Uh, just before the release of the next wave, your store will declare the player with the most points uh, their, as their wave leader and award them a special prize. Um, this sounds very much like uh, uh, what most people have been doing as far as their like league play. I know uh, Pastimes uh, has... Uh, different league events and stuff mm -hmm. and this seems that just uh an easy way to get a league style progression of the community um yeah. just right out of the box with it, what hopefully is minimal effort on the organizer them yeah i'm curious to see how flexible it is right because we do a league we do it it, it encapsulates two months of play um, with the eighth week being uh, the championship week. And I'm just curious to see, like, so they're correlating this with the wave releases. So there will be a wave one, what they use it, wave one leader. So everything up until wave one. And once wave two hits, whoever has the most number of points will be the wave one leader. And then that happens for each progressive wave. So, I mean, it's... I'm just, I really want to get my hands on this material on how they're going to calculate these points because depending on how quickly they're releasing the, the waves is going to determine like how much time you have to gain points. You know what I mean? 
Yeah, I mean, well, if their their current schedule runs about two big waves a year, would you agree? Yeah, yeah, like two. I would, yeah, two big waves a year, and there's like a usually like a half wave somewhere in the middle. We just don't know like what what We're, the second edition what they're gonna do. Uh, yeah, because there's normally the one in on uh, the fall, and then the one in basically the start of the year. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so we'll you know we'll see how that turns out. But essentially, store championships are are gone. Like they don't exist at least from what we know so far. So in my mind, as you see from my graphic here on the right, your store championship level has become, has been split off into these two uh, different type of events. You have your attack run and you have your deluxe wave kits that go together there. Then we get to the regional level. Okay, regional level. And that's going to be our hyperspace trials uh, events a lot of these have hyperspace and i think i understand the reason why they're all called hyperspace something we'll talk about that later um what are the wheel what are these hyperspace trials you speak of all right well they're uh, as you mentioned they're uh the equivalent to uh what we understand as regionals uh, they should be large events held at qualified retailers um and there's uh, two periods of hyperspace trials a year. And each period of trials will include uh, new challenges and refresh the metagame with event-specific squad building requirements. Uh, these will be communicated through the app uh, that they are releasing. So before we go too, too much farther, I want to take some time to talk about the fact like, – there's, there's a lot to unpack – in just that so um, they say that the new challenge is that there's going to be event specific squad building requirements so as a as a neat like I'm curious to see how this is going to work out because that's something very different from what we're used to we're used to having a very uh, what I'll call open metagame, I mean, it really isn't, right? Because we kind of knew what, what the best lists are. But we had everything available to us. And now we're saying, depending on which event you're going to, this is going to be, you're, they're going to say, you, you have to stick to these restrictions. Uh, that should be definitely interesting and keep things fresh. Uh, will it help the game I, I don't know I, it depends on how strict those restrictions are um, if they're doing something like uh, just like Coruscant where you just need to include a, a certain card um, that could be still very um, experimental and uh, you know exploratory uh, as far as what kind of list you can bring um, but if they want something very narrow I don't know like if you had to bring I don't know, what, what would be something that would you think would be too narrow uh, to, to restrict the, the play? So I would say something too narrow would be if they said, like, no ships over initiative, like, initiative five and six ships are banned. Yeah, something like that. Or pilots, not ships, excuse me, would be, I think, something that's too narrow. Um, maybe this is, you know, when they teased second edition, they did talk about having thematic events, but I think that could also get a little narrow. So for instance, if they said like battle, battle of Yavin only, you know, all of a sudden you, you really, that does squish the box quite a bit, especially if we're considering all the content that's inside of the conversion kits and things like that. So um, maybe it's a ban list. Maybe it's something like the top, you know, the top 10 pilots and top 10 upgrades, or maybe less than that for upgrades because you really don't have that many compared to pilots. You're just like not allowed to use. But they said that they're going to put it in in uh, in the app, right? So it's, it's going to be controlled there um, depending on, uh, on what's going on. But... I guess my, my question is, if it's in the app, 
if it's in the app and you can run these once per year at your store, that means they're going to be happening throughout a span of time. I guess you'll have have some information on how people do that, like depending if uh, like List Juggler gets updated or something like that. I don't know I'm just spitballing here, just kind of trying to trying to pull this apart because it's definitely it, it's strange. I know that some people are not huge fans because it they think it might hurt the diversity of the game. Yeah, and I I would agree with that. I know that there has been some backlash over um, the what has essentially been Boba Fett pilot banned at Coruscant because you're required to bring him as a crew. And that uh, has upset people. And I, I fear something similar to that, where if they're like, uh, no force users, but if you got into the game to play force users, you know, if you are like, oh, I'm, I'm, I'm bought the game for Vader, and I'm flying Vader every every game. Uh, you really have no incentive to go to one of these then. So hopefully they can find that nice balance of uh, uh, new, like uh, interesting, but not restrictive. Right. Yeah. I mean, they're they're gonna have to. Maybe they do some type of voting similar to the Coruscant, where they say, you know, if depending on what faction you are you need to use x upgrade or x pilot i think my my issue when they when they made the the coruscant voting i know it's a little bit of a tangent is that they did include unique um that boba fett is really the, the perfect example they included unique um crew members that are also pilots and also by making it a crew slot you force the type of list that people are going to make because especially uh i'm not sure if coruscant i mean you're, you're i think you you have an invite so do you know is coruscant yeah. uh include the conversion kit can you oh, yeah, play the stuff in there to, because uh, uh leia is the rebel okay. um choice so it it definitely is um that open play i don't know we don't have a specific word for it open, but... i think open construction is probably the best Sure. Or a way yeah. to say it. Uh, or uh, unlimited list building. Um, so it definitely is that. And um, I think at this point in time, in second edition's lifespan, I think it kind of needs to be, um, especially if you're going to restrict upgrades like that, you kind of need to widen the pool. Mm -hmm. Yeah, uh, I'm I'm in for that. And here's here's the next part that I'm I'm also really uh, interested in and, and want to talk about is they said there's going to be two periods of hyperspace trials each year, but we also know that a single store can only run one of these a year, right? So it's going to be a bit of a toss up. Like you don't know which one you're getting, right? When you as, when you sign up as a store, I know pastimes. Uh, our local store, um, home of Gold Squadron, is in Ch in the Chicagoland area. By the way, I, I this is this is like the fourth time in a, in a couple weeks where somebody says, "Wait, you guys are out of Chicago?" I'm like, "Yeah." So if <laughs> just in case you didn't realize, um, but yeah, I want to see. I, I I'm curious to see how the kits are different, but I'm also curious to see how geographically this works. Like especially if you can get a tight knit community, like I think I think in in the Chicagoland area, I can think of three stores that could handle that sixty four player minimum capacity. Um, that we'll talk about here in a minute. Like Pastimes can do it. I think GameStorm can just squeak it in, like just barely. But they they're gonna have to take over the entire store, like absolutely zero space or anything else. Um, and Grognard Games could do it if they rearrange some things. But like, uh, we'll, we'll we'll get to that in a minute. I'm just I'm excited to see how this lays out, especially as a as a um, as a content creator. Like I'm my goal 
is to cover as many of those hyperspace trials as possible. Like I'm going to be traveling. I, I'm, I'm opening up the distance. Like I want to get, I want to get into Iowa. Okay. I want to get into Iowa. I want, I'm, oh, I've already been to Wisconsin and Indiana. I want to just start extending things. I'd like to maybe get to like Tennessee, Kentucky area. Um, but yeah, so we're, we're going to be doing that for sure. Um, so some of the other things about these hyperspace trials is that there is no preset limitation on the number of hyperspace trials. It says each qualified retailer will be able to host one per year. Um, that's interesting that there's no, no, no limitations. You just have to be able to meet the requirements, which are a 64 player capacity minimum. And I, I wanted to break it down for maybe like if your local store was thinking like, can we actually pull this off or not? That's essentially 16 eight foot tables, eight foot tables about your standard in most game stores. If you have 16 of those, you could fit it. If you have regular size tables, you put the uh, like science boards and you can make them the correct widths in order to fit an X-Wing mat um, for that. 64 there. What's next? Uh, and now I want to I want to start breaking breaking down some some information here, and asking some questions. Will there be more hyperspace trials than we had regionals in the past? What do you think, Will? Well, it, now you may be more familiar with this than I am, um, but from what I understand, the process for a regional in the past was more restrictive, mm -hmm. and. Um, hopefully, I, I would assume that there would be more uh, at this, uh, with the trials, more trials than regionals. Um, but like I said, I'm, uh, what, do you know about the, the current or previous qualifications for regionals? So before, for, that, that's a great segue, Will, um, before essentially they marked off geographical radiuses and said like if this one store in this area will get it so for instance pastimes was the chicago regional nobody within a very long uh they, they, there wasn't any other one in illinois it was just pastimes uh wisconsin got a regional um up there that was moved. It was there was one in Wisconsin. Uh, there wasn't. Yeah, there was one in Indiana, but then there wasn't one in Ohio. So like that moved around, uh, and essentially they were just trying to get the the most bang for their buck, but but limiting the number of them. The some of the limiting factors that could come into this hyperspace. They do say like there is no uh, maximum number. If you can fit it, you can do it. Uh, but I know that the cost of the kit is going to be a little bit uh, cost pro prohibitive. I think we saw that it was, uh, I think, like four. Actually, Coach, you're in the chat right now. How many, uh, how much was those kits? They're $400, something like that? Uh, I think it was like 450 or 475 It Almost $500. Yeah. But so, if, if you're looking at 64 players... Right. Right. So that's what's the quick math on that? So it's seven dollars in change. I just did it on yeah. my phone. Oh, there so you I guess go. That, that's not too bad. But I guess you have to be. I think you have to be pretty confident as a store owner that people are going to show up. Because what if you know you have the space and you only get so for let's give a perfect example. I know that it's one point oh right now, but our pastimes store championships in the past. We have had like 80 person store championships, but this last weekend, how many people did we have? 18, right? Uh, I was on table 20, or I was on table 10 at one point, so we had to have 20. At, at least 20. So, like, I'm I, you have to be pretty confident that you're going to be able to to recoup your money and then that doesn't include you know by taking up the amount of space that this event's going to take that's loss of table space which means other events and then you have to run the lights and pay the people in the store so i'm curious to see how many stores are going to be willing to pull the trigger on these kits um 
So I mean, it's just just something something to to think about. But will I do I do agree with you. It seems like we should probably have more of these than we had regionals. Like we will end up with more. Oh yeah, I mean, like you said, there's just a uh, should be able to get at least two in Chicago. I mean, uh, Milwaukee. Almost I would say almost every major sh city or like metropolitan area at least has one game store that could hold 64 players. Mm -hmm. Like, uh, I'm trying to think of, I don't think, like, Iowa has ever had a regional, um, but I know that there's uh, at least two or three game stores who would be able to fit the requirements. That's awesome. And like, like you said, uh, Ohio. Mm -hmm. Like, uh, um, I... I don't think, especially with being able to have it in two separate times of the year, I know that was a problem with store championships because there's so many squeezed into a, uh, so few weeks that uh, people start stepping on other people's toes mm -hmm. as far as like scheduling it the same weekend and everything. So being able to spread that out um, over a longer period of time and uh, having uh, fewer restrictions on it should I would, I would expect like at least double the amount of regionals easily. Yeah, I mean we could definitely definitely expect that. And uh, I know if if your store was interested in doing it, I believe if I'm not mistaken that stores were sent this information to sign up um, with with a good amount of lead time. They did state in the article that tomorrow, that is August 14th, is the last day to put in the application. Um, but I, I saw some people getting salty about that online, but they did – like this article – the article wasn't for retailers. It was for just us as public, and they just kind of put that in there. It's it's one of those where they didn't have to mention the application, but they did for uh, – for uh, what you call it. You know, I, I don't know why they put it in there, but as, as a last second reminder maybe. Yeah, they uh, stores. Uh, any store that would have had been uh, been sent the attack wave uh, and uh, the deluxe kit information, they would have got the information about trials as well. So they they almost certainly have it already. Yeah. So hopefully they read their information. However, that gets disseminated to them. Uh, we're getting uh, reports here that they had about two and a half weeks to 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 make that decision. That's a little short, but. I guess maybe they they got it out to them a little a little late, I would say. Um, but yeah, so that's hyperspace trials. I'm excited to to see how these come out. We're gonna circle back to them here in a little bit. Let's go ahead and hit our next one. Oops, wrong button. Let's try that again. There it is. So I want to talk about our hyperspace cups. Okay, so these are gonna be your national. Um, national level events so you have uh, for instance the gen con what we just did you have the nova open which has been like the u.s nationals and the uk game expo which has been uh, also a continental very similar to gen con uh, all these are going to end up becoming hyperspace cups they will essentially feel the same as what you, what you know, they compared them to the hyperspace trials, but they said like hyperspace trials with better prizes. Uh, essentially what they're saying is it's a tournament with better prizes, which is exactly what those national level events are. Do they mention, I read through the article, but do they, uh, do they mention the restrictive building for cups as well? They didn't, but they like, we can't say that it that it will or won't have that because they said they like hyperspace cups are bigger and better than hyperspace um i already missed the vocabulary uh hyperspace trials so like they didn't say that it wouldn't have it but they also didn't say that it would like you, you know what i'm saying kind of goes both yeah. ways yeah, it uh doesn't doesn't read either way. It mm -hmm. Makes sense. Mm -hmm. I would um I would hope not for that kind of level of play, uh, but 
I don't know. It's a new age, so anything's possible. Yeah, we don't. We 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 know nothing. <laughs> and now I want to get to the the hot button topic here, and that is, what do you have to do to qualify to get into the world? championships of x-wing so this is a new thing um in the past worlds has been a essentially an open invitation it's like hey if you can manage to get a ticket through whatever system we have so they've done the random lotteries they've done the uh, uh the refresh wars <laughs> um you know as, as essentially anybody who wanted to go would make their attempt to try to get a ticket and then they would distribute then that is not the case anymore will how, how do i wh what are my options for getting into worlds all right uh you have getting top eight at a system open uh you at at these system opens you participate in a hyperspace qualifier and go undefeated you can win one of the uh hyperspace trials of uh of one of your stores or you can get to the final table at a hyperspace cup and finish in the top two yeah so i know one of the very first things that popped out to me because we're going to talk about pros and cons um, of this system is at first my, my gut reaction i i initially looked at it and said man that's not that many opportunities to to get a ticket it is and it isn't depending on a couple of factors so uh, top eight at a system open is actually quite a, quite a decent number because we had at least you know, mo mind you most of them are in the u.s which we will get to that point here in a minute uh that was there was about 15 um about 15 system opens times eight that gets you 120 people um, this year we had about 40-ish people get with a hyperspace qualifier. Um, the hyperspace trials are regional levels. Um, you know, Will and I, I think, both think that we'll probably have about double the number of regional, um, you know, regional opportunities compared to these um, hyperspace trials. But now the the, the question that that i want to talk about here is while that sound you know after i break it down like oh hey that that's a lot of opportunities a couple things that we need to to add in there is the fact that does this favor um people who have a a, a more we'll call it a, a bigger disposable income because you're able to 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 get yourself more opportunities to play What do you think, Will? Um, yes, it would, but I guess I don't see that as a problem. Um, I understand that if you can only make one trial, um, your options for worlds are very, or your ability to get to worlds is far narrower, but on the flip side, the people who are going to multiple opens, multiple trials, and even multiple cups, they seem pretty dedicated, and I would think then deserve the the higher chance to get to worlds. Okay, I mean, I would say like definitely one of the pros to this is that it does set a certain level of achievement for. Um, for being part of what's what's billed as the most prestigious um, X-wing event that OP is running, right? They 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 want the absolute best in the world competing with each other. Um, but I think another on the other side, one of the cons is players in unsupported countries now, unless they have that income to travel to another country nearby. Um, that's going to be able, that's going to be able to hold one of these hyperspace trials uh, or or a system open will not have a chance to get into worlds without without that so you know i think a perfect example which has been brought up numerous times is uh Justin Pua our 
uh, world champion, ch world champion from not the last but 2017 Worlds. Um, if he doesn't, if he cannot afford to travel outside of his country to try to get multiple chances to to get to hyperspace trials, he will not be able to, you know, attend the world championships. Um, or people in his in his situation where they might be a really great player, but if they don't have any way to get access to that ticket, that could be that could be an issue. For uh, I mean, in the U.S., I would say if if you're a U.S. player, y don't complain, man. <laughs> don't complain because I think people in uh in like Asia, Australia area, Eastern Asia. Think they're gonna they're gonna have the hardest time uh, being able to being able to get into these events, which then folds for me into like how much of a world championship is this gonna be compared to what it's been in the past. Um, I I'll agree with you there, I, and uh, even um, as far as uh, you know. Um, like basically everywhere but Europe and America is going to have a hard time getting into one of these. Now, I would hope then that this more open access to trials would include those regions. Um, I know that uh, uh, Australia in particular has been fighting for support. So hopefully um, FFG uh, an organized play can get those trials to those different regions and you at least give them an opportunity to to attend worlds yeah and and that's that is what i want to i want to stress i think is you know does ffg actually listen to podcasts and all that stuff i don't think so but if if there was anything to really stress here is like i want to see more FFG organized play spread through more parts of the country because there's a lot of people who love this game. While I know that there are there are legal issues attached to that, like I'm I'm fully aware. Um, and when I was at um, when I was at Gen Con, if you look at one of our interviews, I actually talked to uh, to Frank Brooks about it. I kind of slipped it in uh, <laughs> in into one of our my interview questions, talking about. Uh, the the lack of support in some of these countries, and essentially uh, what he was explaining is there there are some issues with getting the licensing um, set up, especially now that it's uh, that Star Wars is owned by Disney, like that causes some issues with trying to connect these licenses. So I mean, we'll, I I don't know what we're gonna see. And uh, let's see. There's a question here from a listener asking thoughts on FFG allowing all world championship players invites for life. I think they should. Why not? Um, not play. I mean, players world world championship. No, not all world should. No, I don't think so. Uh, I think that would get it to. Sorry, I misread your question. I, I think it would eventually. So, for instance, me is part of a team, right? I'm a part of Gold Squadron. If me and Will are in, at an event, and I have already, you know, at last season, I got my invite to Worlds, but Will doesn't have his, and we're, you know, I'm in a situation where I can take a fall for him. Like, all right, Will, I, I'm already invited to Worlds, and you're not, so I'm going to take a fall for you. So I, I think a lot of that's going to happen and end up just everybody – ends up being invited again kind of invalidates i think the winners should always have it i think that that's what i read when i read your question sorry about that i know that or i from what i understand every top 16 at this year's worlds i believe got guaranteed tickets for next year as well okay that's I, awesome i think that is sufficient yeah um and I mean the uh, like Nand, Justin, uh, Paul Heaver. Um, I if they could get to these trials and opens, I have confidence that they can they can still get their tickets. Yep. And 
I would say so. There's a couple of I think tips that I want to throw out here, which I've I've shadowed on a little bit already. When it comes to trying to get as many people in your group invites to worlds, so while you have no con- control of matchups. I know us at Gold Squadron, we're always looking out for each other. We want to make sure that everybody can, uh, for instance, get a regional buy. So at these different store championships, even though I have won a, a store championship already, I go and I still play a competitive list, and I try to get as much of the bad matchups for my bet for my friends eliminated, essentially. And I think that's one thing that, as a team, you have to be mindful of. It's not – I wouldn't call – I know some people call it, call it collusion. Like, oh, you're, you're, you're manipulating things. Like, well, I'm playing with a purpose, right? I'm trying to make sure that if I'm in a situation where I can help out my friend and I already have this thing, that this tournament, that, that's the end goal, they can have it. Um, that is what it is. I know that that's, that's, a, that's a touchy subject, but I think with – worlds being invite only i think it would be foolish of teams not to take that into consideration um and also looking at the number of people that might be able to get invites it's going to be interesting to see how people react when for instance a player um let's talk about andrew bunn great guy absolutely fantastic guy but if we took the current system and said all right um like we you took these qualifications and we put it into this last season that happened Andrew would have gotten like four or five invites and that's four invites that other people couldn't have had right so that's something that I also think is a little bit interesting going into this system um, that could cause some I don't want to call it like saltiness what do you think yeah that was that was my question on it was that um uh, so I know, um, uh, Jesper, uh, in the same open, uh, won hyperspace and the, the actual open. Um, I think, uh, Nathan ID did the same thing. Yep. Is that right? He yep. won the open at Kublai Khan and yep. he went undefeated in the hyperspace qualifier. And Joel Killingsworth from the Barons, him too. Uh, so does that... In in this new format, that's I guess my main question is if it is just top eight, but if six of them already have it, does that go down then? Does mm-hmm. it cover the rest of the ones? Now for store championships, uh, for for instance, our our last or geez yesterday yeah uh, <laughs> yesterday uh, it was me Marcel and Blaine. Mm-hmm. And uh, uh, with regional buys already, and Brandon, who was the fourth member of the top four, didn't have his buy. So it, it automatically went to him regardless of how the game ended up, um, which if you watch uh, one of the videos, you can see Brandon being fully aware uh, that he already has the buy. Um, <laughs> <laughs> But uh, so that that's interesting to me. If those won't overlap, if if they will be able to provide them to the next person in line who doesn't have a buy and continue that up, because if not, I feel like they're wasted. Yeah. Um. I guess it'd be the yeah. Did that? They're. Uh, and it does it in that situation. It does create that kind of borderline collusion of well it, it's wasted if i win this match so mm-hmm. i might as well just throw it then yep um even if it, it's not your teammate if it's just some other guy who's like man i wish i could go to worlds well oh yeah well I'll, I'll tell you you know i i streamed all of these system opens and the players when they got to the were in the hyperspace qualifiers and in the top cut like they were asking each other, "Do you have an invite to Coruscant already?" No, yes, yes, and you know, I'm not gonna call out any names, but they they fell on on swords on purpose because it didn't. They wanted. It was more about getting as many people that experience 
rather than winning, which for me is a thumbs up for the community because it was more about, like I said, just getting as many people into into those events as possible. Um, that's that's what I think. And you know, somebody in the chat asked Dion, "Would you ever? Let's see, how do he say it? Would you let a friend win if you're already invited?" I absolutely would. I have no shame saying that. You know, if if I got to a position where I was able to give that game away and there's no reason for me to win, whether whether it's a friend or how William said, just somebody who's not invited and let's say I got one, then I'm going to let it go. I know that some people don't love that because they think it kind of spoils the um, the competitive feel, the like, you know, you have to earn your spot. But and I, I just I don't I personally don't work that way. Just how I am. I, I wouldn't automatically concede. All right. And I certainly wouldn't. I, I think the difference here is collusion is both players deciding something together. But if it's just you, if you're like, I'm going to, I'm going to lose the game regardless. Like you, you, my opponent don't have a choice in that. That is my decision. I think that is fine. But I, me as a player, as a competitive player, would still put the game on the table and still play it out and I'll, and still give them the shot to earn it themselves um, before you just straight concede. Yep. I mean, at least it, um, worst comes to worst, you get to the last turn and say, I concede. <laughs> like, I don't want to play anymore. I'm done. You win. <laughs> I know that some again. That's that's a uh, it's a touchy subject, but uh, you know, with with this being invite only, these are these are these are kind of where my where my mind starts to stretch because I know I want I want all of Gold Squadron to be able to go to Worlds. Um, with all the I mean, who, who Worlds the last few years has really been a really great community binding event. Um, last year with the goldies, like that was that that was by far just my favorite thing about the last uh, my whole X Wing career was being able to put that together and have all these people around and and just celebrate us as a community. Now I'll, I'll be doing it again, but I know that in the back of my mind, like I know that there's going to be people people who would have wanted to be there. Who can't be there. And you know. That actually reminds me. Of another point. So we talked about. Different ways for invites. To possibly get wasted. Right. A, pers a person. M getting into that position. To get the invite multiple times. And if there's not that. Uh, passing it down. Like you were talking about Will. But what if. A player. Gets the invite. And just can't go. It's like I don't. I can't get the time off. To. To get. You know, to go to Worlds, or I don't want to, you know, spend my vacation time to go to Minnesota to play X-Wing. Like, some people have different priorities, and that's fine. Um, I, I'm really curious to see how this season goes. I would hope that, I, I know you can't do it now, especially as far as, like, regional buys and things, but I would hope at the, like, uh, the Cups or even the trials um that you know that they would realistically ask people we, we mentioned the uh uh the non-supported regions like if those top players are like no i'm not traveling five thousand miles to minnesota um but someone can i feel like that should be able to be transferred to them but uh, from our current experience, I, um, yeah, our current experience with this kind of system, it doesn't seem like that's going to be possible. Yeah, I don't, I don't think so. Um, so we have something here. Yeah, it's uh, we'll see how many people. You know, this I think this year is definitely going to be a trial run for FFG. 
I really like the idea of the hyperspace trials and being able to have more of those. Essentially, more regionals. I That is a big plus because the more big events we have, the community grows. Uh, it's more in the in the limelight. And um, I think that's, that's good. Um, the, the negative side of this is we don't know exactly how this invite system is going to affect player mentality when playing. Because now, let's talk about like, Dion and Will at, a, at an event where we don't have an invite yet. Okay, we don't have an invite to Worlds yet. This is our last opportunity. And we know this is our last chance to get to Worlds. All of a sudden, the pressure is really turned up. It's really turned up. And some people react very differently to that pressure. I would say, um, you know, William William and I are pretty even even keeled during during pressure situations. But I know I'll talk about myself is if this is my last chance to to get a hyper space invite um, and I'm in a game and my opponent forgets to do a focus like those are those little situations where in most I would say 90% of the time I say hey you forgot to do your action but all of a sudden now will will some of the, the feel good moments of, in X-Wing which again I'm not saying that it's right or wrong to give people actions when they miss triggers I'm, I'm not talking about that but uh like i'm not saying it's good or wrong i'm just saying like those are the that's an example of moments that could just become a, l a little more intense than what they are right now with an invitational system well dion i know that uh what was the last open you guys played in origins yes how, how was the competitive environment for invites at Origins? I mean, people really, pe people brought their A game. And I would say just b being there, it felt a lot, a lot more tense than any of the other Opens I'd been at. I know it was more tense for me as it was my last chance to get, to get an invite and I failed. But, uh... Yeah, it's I just think that the like competitiveness level, not the comp like not competitiveness of the players, but the competitive mindset is going to um, increase in um, it's going to be more prevalent. I think that's the word I'm looking for. More prevalent in players. But yeah, so we'll we'll see how that that turns out. I know I'm I'm not upset. You know, I, I I it's very hard to make Dion Morales salty. I'm a pretty happy-go-lucky person, um, so we'll have to see. And uh, one one a couple points that I I forgot to bring up because we were, we were really going down the rabbit hole on that one is I think that the name for hyperspace calling all these things hyperspace is that it's the hyperspace jump to worlds i think that's why they're all called that that they're being a little cute there and um i brought up a point yesterday that does this system of doing invites favor people with higher disposable income i want to remind you whenever you want to go to an event that's a travel event try to get um try to get a group of people to go and travel together like if you could take a hotel room and divide it by six, it's a lot cheaper than if it's just one person. So just it's a small things like try to travel in groups to lower costs. I know that that if it's if things are already tight, even with paying, you know, with like thirty dollars a night in a hotel. Um, but I mean, that's better than paying, you know, one fifty little just little things. Yeah, also. Um get a hold of the local play group as well um who knows maybe someone has a big house has a couple extra bedrooms uh, or they know uh, a cheap motel nearby um that is kind of like on the dl um so I, they they the local play group might be able to assist you as with travel as well yep just posting it and, and asking like hey 
Just, just, it never hurts to ask. You, you would be surprised how many people would be willing to help. Even if they can't let you stay at their place, they might be able to give you some tips um, on, on some possibilities. Or, you know, person knows X and they, you know, I, I've had a lot of great situations this season with traveling around the U.S. and just hitting up people saying, hey, or even if you're looking for different X-Wing players, post and say, who else is going to this event? I may, I met Jerry Holt. Um, out of Canada, I forget which part of Canada. I have a guess on the city, but I don't want to insult anybody, so I'm not gonna say it. Like I met Jerry for the first time because I was going to the um, Glendale, Arizona system open to stream, and I just posted in Phoenix Squadron. I was like, I'm looking for somebody to share Airbnb with. Who wants to hang out? And he he replied, and now I got a new, I got a new friend. So that gets. It's pretty cool. People people like to uh, you know make make new friends uh, in X Wing. Now I want to take a sec and talk about the Coruscant Invitational. So if you haven't heard, what what, what is what is going to be this this Coruscant Invitational? Will the, the new way? Oh, the the new Coruscant Invitational uh, is for System Champions. System open champions only. Um, they these are the ones who get the free flight and lodging to the world championships. Um, and the Coruscant Invitational is the day before the world's um, championship tournament. So kind of an elite side event, if you want to look at it like that. Right, because everybody who is a system open champion is also a world's invitee. So all of the system open champions will who can make it will be able to participate in this event. And Gold Squadron podcast will of course be there streaming. We'll we'll, we'll get that done for you. Or I'm gonna try. <laughs> um. Uh, somebody just asked, is that the event play play mat design? Uh, no, that's just a picture of Coruscant. That's all it is. I mean, I think that's what the play mat, the, the original, you were there, Will. The original one had a big Coruscant on it, right? Uh, yes. Yes, because that was from uh, uh, the year where uh, each open was a different planet. Mm -hmm. And then Coruscant was, you know, at the, the hub, the, the center of the galaxy, if you will. And uh, yeah, that has it on. Um, the center of it. Yeah, so I mean, we. This is all. This is everything that FFG gave us in regards to their their events. So let's just recap real quick. We have a few different types. We have uh, here it is. We have attack run kits. We have deluxe wave kits. Both of those essentially equal your to store championship level local stuff. Hyperspace trials are the new regionals, but there's going to be more of them if you can at least sit 64 players or have the space for that. And then there is the hyperspace cups, which are your national level events, and then you still have the system open series. And I know here's a, a, a couple of things I did want to talk about the system opens. I would I get sometimes some flack. It's like, oh, you you you're you're in cahoots with Cascade Games, and you say all these nice things about them. First, they're fantastic people, and they have helped me out and you guys more than you know when it comes to the System Open series. But just a couple of uh, some insight. They are they only control events and run events in the United States. They actually try to go up to Canada. But there was some uh, conflict issues with uh, another company that FFG had a contract with up there. So essentially, Cascade Games is United States only. They're not the reason why there isn't one in Australia, for instance, yet. So that's uh, some things to keep in mind. But I am excited because while I, I can't give specifics, I know that uh, Cascade Games did test a couple of standalone events where they they did it in portland seattle and glendale uh, arizona where they 
had it wasn't it was not at a convention and they said can these support themselves and essentially with the attendance that showed up it was about it's at that maybe level is do we take the risk to do it again um because it was essentially during a bit of a decline a little, little bit of a dip in tournament attendance for x-wing but with second edition will will the hype bring the people out what what do you think are we going to see some increases in tournament uh attendance will uh yes uh for sure there's definitely been um like fluctuations throughout uh x-wing's history is um i definitely think that uh right after um I want to say wave 11 or 12, the, the triple jump era. I know a lot of people dropped out and then they, they made some FAQ changes, which slowly brought a couple of people back and um, kind of re revitalized the, the player base. And then now it kind of dipped back again. Um, so I think it's, it's going to, I would probably say reach an all time high. Uh, right uh, within the first year of second edition. And we'll hopefully see it just increased higher and higher. I mean, even in this last year of um, first edition, we've had uh, more system opens, um, the largest X-Wing event ever in in the world at, at what, 500 players? And yeah, that was, uh, that was in Europe, I believe. Yeah, Birmingham. Yes. Uh, yep, the Birmingham. System I think it was open. the Open. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I had 500 players, which is outrageous. I know, I know Europe's a little bit more condensed, but that's still a testament of that things are going up. Um, and that the gra even though the graph kind of goes up and down, I think overall it's always been increasing. So I, I have no doubt that it's going to just keep going up and up. And FFG, I'll tell you this, as, as far as a business standpoint, FFG would have no reason to release a second edition if they didn't think that those numbers were going to keep increasing. Yeah, that's, um, that's a great point. Yeah, if you're not, there's no reason to add five to ten years to a game if you don't think it's going to continue to get better and or uh, larger and larger continue so, to, yeah. continue to make you money <laughs> yeah i mean they're they are a business and they're they're obviously not dumb so um yeah i i think that we'll have hopefully um the best year ever uh, in uh 2019 yeah, I'm looking forward to it. I know, you know, this this entire episode was kind of like speculative and we're, we were just kind of trying to parse what FFG came here over, or gave us here. Overall, I think it's going to be a positive step, but the the question marks come in what is FFG doing to support the people who aren't supported yet? And I don't have any inside information or anything, but I know that um, from from what we've heard in the past is that they're trying, they're always trying, and uh, hopefully we see some results soon so that our brethren in like Brazil, there's a, a couple other countries in South America, uh, the uh, players in the in uh, in Asia, China, Japan, um, over there, uh, Singapore. That's where Justin is from. Just that, so that they can have an opportunity to have the same experience as us in the U.S. and have access to these kits and be able to uh, really make this a a more... The more people who have access to these kits is going to be the more world exposure that X-Wing is going to get, which caused growth. And as long as the game is growing, we get to continue playing this game. So um, I I'm super excited. Yeah, I'll say that uh, I think that we in the Midwest are a little jaded to the fact that we could drive to Worlds or we could drive to these large events, uh, to like a national even. Um, and it, it's, it continues to blow my mind that uh, people like you mentioned uh, uh, from the Middle East, uh, from South America, 
are not only playing this game, but traveling to these competitive events. If and I I can't on I can't see why FFG can't realize that as well. That the potential is there if they just made a solid effort. Yeah. Absolutely. So hopefully hopefully we see some growth and we just want to let you guys know that any listeners or viewers that uh that play in those areas, we do fully support you guys and we hope to uh hope you guys can get access to that stuff soon. Um uh, we're definitely have to see once uh uh excuse me, I'm sorry, I'm reading something here from a from a viewer. Yeah, anyway. Um, but yeah, so I want to thank everybody. We'll edit that out in post, you know, that big gap of you trying to read things. You're bad at reading. I want to thank everybody for uh, for listening today. Uh, we're going to go into who, what have you done with those plants. We do want to mention the Minoc Open is coming up here. Uh, registration is open for the Minoc Open. Gold Squadron Podcast is the official stream for the Minoc Open a premier level style 2.0 event and they are trying to get people to sign up before September 15th so you guys can get those goodies there's challenge coins and a binder and t-shirts and all that stuff so if you're going I'll see you there that's going to be in Burbank California we got to hit up the Gold Squadron Classic again sign up guys sign up uh, we're going to be doing that September 22nd and if you pre-register even if you pre-register the day before you will get the pre-registration card there but not not a day after not a day after okay you can't you can't can't sign up on the 22nd you gotta sign up on the 21st if you want that sweet sweet card uh more spoilers to come and uh if you like what we do here at gold squadron podcast there's a couple things you can do you can click that twitch prime button when you're watching us uh, on our all of our streams, we've been streaming all around the world, uh, not around the world, excuse me, around the U.S., and I'm planning, I'm trying to make it the world. Will, that's the goal. Do you know that? That's the goal? Yeah, I'm, I mean, I know you have connections in Canada and Australia. Yep. And uh, I have met friends through Gen Con and Worlds, uh, so that would be awesome uh, yeah. to, to reach those crazy locations. I, I know that you're doing... You're doing so much traveling. Uh, I've I've literally lost count of <laughs> how many like trips you've made and everything. But I know it's in like what twenty. It's over twenty trips you've made it just is. to stream. Yeah. yeah, it's it's exciting, and none of it's possible. None of it is possible without uh, all the support for the community. And uh, so you can watch our live x events and content at twitch.tv slash gold squadron podcast. Remember to hit that Twitch Prime button. It's literally free money. It just $2 and change just comes our way. Hit it every 30 days. Um, you can watch all of our X-Wing replays and any of our videos on our YouTube page. Just look up Gold Squadron Podcast. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button. And lastly, and most importantly, if you enjoy all the content we bring you and want to help us continue expanding our content while getting awesome swag, go to patreon.com slash gold squadron. And I want to take the time to give special shout outs and thanks to people who have become patrons since August 1st, and that is Laszlo Leto, Dan McGinn, Mark Myers, Scott Ostronic, Lee Russell, Robert Kukuchka, and Olaf Bowman. You guys are awesome. Thank you so much for your support. So I'm Dion. He's Will. I don't know where everybody else is. Marcel's being fancy, and Nate is getting ready for work tomorrow um, you guys can't see it if you're in your car but um air quotes I, I, hopefully my voice inflection shows my sarcasm <laughs> hey don't hate don't hate they they love the podcast they just everybody's busy everybody's busy it's it's a crazy time my name is dion gold squadron out